I remember most of them, yes. Here in the back of Beatmania 3, the final, which was the first arcade machine I bought back in around 2005. And then I have Dance Dance Revolution, which I bought in, I want to say 2007? Oh, 2006, 2007, something like that. Then we have Kraken DJ. It's really hard to find in the US, and it's actually a really fun game. Uh, most people haven't had a chance to play it because it's really hard to find. There, there needs to be something more to it than just simply rare, because there are some rare music games out there that I don't care for, um, but this one I, I really enjoyed the game as well. Uh, and then of course we have Technica. works completely differently than most other music games out there. You had no idea like where, what package to put it in so that you could understand the game. But there was no home version of Technica, so the only place you could play it was if you went to the arcade, unless you likely had other friends who also went to the arcade that you hung out with, you probably wouldn't have heard about it. What was your experience in arcades prior to Technica? Arcades? Zero. <laughs> no experience at all. I just walked in, I found a machine that I fell in love with, and it all started from there. Coming to the arcades, you know, I wasn't ever part of the arcade scene. I never went to the arcades. Like, the last arcade I went to before I played Technica for the first time was like Chuck E. Cheese, and I was like, when I was 13, I stopped playing games for a while until, you know, like I said before, friends introduced me to Technica. I actually discovered Technica on accident. I was hanging out with one of my friends who was actually a Street Fighter player and I was just be like, uh, I don't play fighting games. And then I walked around, I'm like, what is this game? I noticed in the corner of the arcade, there was this game Technica and there were a lot of people gathered around it. I saw this really brightly lit machine. No one has, has ever seen a game like that before. I never knew that music games like that existed. No buttons, it was all touchscreen. I'm like, hey, this is pretty cool. Uh, the team really wanted to be innovative, so we knew that, you know, the first touchscreen game could have been something unique. 뭔가 새로운 거를 더 많이 할수 있다고 생각을 했었어요. 그냥 버튼에서 벗어나서 뭔가 더 새로운 걸할수 있다고 생각했는데 그 터치패드가 없었어요. 터치 스크린이 아이패드가 나오기 전이었어요. The iPhones weren't really even out yet at the time. Nobody, you know, seen anything like this where you can play a game on a touch screen. 그래서 뭐 우리 우리 생각이 여기 눌렀으니까 이 포인트를 눌렀다고 해주겠지만 사실은 그렇지 않거든요. 그런 여러 가지 뭐. 두 개를 입력했는데 입력이 막 여덟 개씩 들어오고 뭐 이런 걸다 소프트웨어적으로 필터링 해주고 뭐 이런 것들이 많이 있었어요. It's just it's a consequence of really old infrared touchscreen technology. Um, the game is is designed to work with a one very particular uh, touchscreen. When you have two fingers on the screen, um, it can't tell between those two fingers and then the other two points on the screen that are cast by the shadow. It was just an inherent flaw with the with the hardware. 뭔가 그 화면 전체를 다 손이 
왔다 갔다 할수 있는 그런 걸 아이디어를 내보자 해서 그런 걸 한번 시도하다가 뭔가 좋은 결과물이 안 나와서 그냥 지금처럼 라인으로 이동하게 됐던 기억이 나네요 <웃음>
Um, still remember the first set? Memories? And the gameplay is actually very... It was very... It was... <laughs> Things moving like twice as fast as it was before. Wait, oh, it's like... Wait, what? And then it was really confusing at first. Wow. It's taking it to the next level. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I can't do the purple alone. Fail. Oh. This is the face of failure here. <laughs> Technica had this learning curve to it that was like different. So I went up to it and I put my money in and I proceeded to fail my first song, which is First Kiss. Um, the easiest song in the game, technically. Oh, I played the game very well. First Step is a set that I played, but I didn't play it and I lost it. I lost it. It's hard to say. I'm going to get up and 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 get up. 한 초등학교? 아 초등학생? 굉장히 어린 친구가 아, 팔짱을 이렇게 보고, 보고 있었던 거예요. Yeah, a lot of the gameplay is based on predicting the rhythm of the song, like knowing the tempo of the song, and I didn't know any of those songs. Any game like that has to have the ability for a non-player to walk up to it, walk into the game, immerse themselves in play, start to like it, and then grow with the game and learn to get as it gets more complicated. But that was the problem with the game. The biggest problem with the game. The one, the one mechanic I've seen screw up new people the most is the one mechanic that's kind of the core of the game, which is the idea that the line has to reach the dot before you touch it. The game system itself was different. The timeline moves actually, and the notes stay in place. Timeline is moving. That moving is called timeline. Yeah. Timeline is moving. Notes are calm, and they stay in place. They touch in a certain moment. 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 They touch in a certain 생소한 플레이 방식이어서 다들 너무 어려워했어요. 보를 실제로 읽는 그런 느낌을 준다고 얘기했었어요. 그것처럼 그 노트도 보면 음이 높은 음은 노트가 위에 있고 낮은 음은 아래 있고 그런 식으로 디자인됐다고 알고 있어요. of playing the music really made the song come alive. Like I think it really did a good job of giving like a, a physical manifestation of the music. Like not just like complimentary, but I really felt like I better understood the music when I played it. The, the bar across the screen I think is the thing that really threw me off, but learning how to play a whole new mechanic was interesting to me. I try to play it again and I tried to play it again. And I was just really determined to at least beat one song in this game. Just kind of blew past me the first couple of rounds, but I, mean, I think what happened is eventually you listen to the music and then you, you know, the magic comes out of your fingers. So it was fun. Game uh, was the thing that I was able to do with the technical. I was able to do with the technical. So maybe about $5 later, I did finally beat the song. And great, when you beat your first song, you get bumped up a couple difficulties to slightly more difficult songs. So then it became a challenge. I was determined to beat three songs to get a full game for my money. So what I thought was really cool is that you could buy a card. Oh, you need to go to the front and you need to get a card. Yeah, you take it with you. You put it in your wallet, you never take it out because you never know when you're going to be back at the arcade. There was like a set of cards. I think like eight cards for technical one. I wanted to get everything, collect all the cards. Oh, okay. Dumped a lot of money on that one, for sure. I've never seen that anywhere else, ever. It asks you to put in your card, put it in, pulls up your DJ name and data. And now everyone has a DJ name, everyone has an identity. My name is actually my initials together. It's John Edward Torres, so J-E-T, Jet. Uh, I came from my first car, uh, Celica. I want people to go, why is a guy named Meat Spin beating my score? Uh, it's just the favorite color, and it was shorter than Blue Bomber. Marjorie is apparently too hard to remember and or spell. So Marjorie, Marjorie, Butter, Butters. Uh, Eugene Kim, he went by Blue BLU. I would be the traitor Blue, and he would be like the actual Blue, because his name is actually spelled BLUE. My pencil 
할때 펜슬의 P 그리고 makes U 할때 U를 어, 알파벳 U로 적고 어, 뒤에 makes you dream something new 이렇게 합쳐서 P U N E W The interaction between the website and using the cards and the machines was absolutely brilliant. Which is why everyone always wanted these machines online. They wanted to save their data. There's an online uh, component called uh, Platinum Crew. Well, at the time that Platinum Crew kind of came onto the scene, it was like a different online network. We would keep updating uh, songs and like different patterns for the levels. The game always did well as long as it was online, as long as it was updated. And the problem was a lot of, in the United States at least, we sold a, a lot of them to people that didn't really understand the type of game that it was. Uh, we didn't have Platinum Crew when the, the, the game first came out. The, the really the hardest part was that the arcades didn't have the internet connection. At the time, we may have had some internet, but you know, it's not like today where you almost need the internet to, to do the numbers. Because uh, none of the games were online at the time. The kids would bug the arcade owners. Please plug it in, put it on the end here, and, and it, was, it was fighting a battle continuously. Hey, get this game online so we could access this content. We would say, hey, we'd pay for it, we split the costs. The problem is, is when a distributor or an operator gets a hold of a game like that and it doesn't make any money, maybe it's their fault because they didn't have it set up correctly, it gets a reputation as a game that doesn't earn very well. A lot of what we did at the time was dump as much money in the machine as we could to show that it was actually being played. And then every single gift giving holiday turned into a, is it going to be a Plat Crew Halloween? Oh yeah. <laughs> is it going to be a Plat Crew Thanksgiving? Platinum Christmas? And then didn't have it, no, not, not Plat Crew New Year, not even Plat Crew MLK Day. <laughs> no. <laughs> A matter of fact, we would go, Mike and I would be able to go online and see which games were online. And I'd call up the arcades and yell at them, put your game, your game online so it makes money. Like, Eventually, they actually did get internet connection and brought it online and basically unlocked a whole different side of the game. When it lit, when that light went on, oh everyone lost their shit. Everybody. And all the game at the fighting, uh, uh, the fighting game area it just like looked over us like we're like freaking yeah. weird. I think the music community was a lot closer than kind of your average Joe. I'll tell you, you know, our uh, music game players were sometimes were the first people when we opened the door in the morning and the last people when we closed the door at night. The first time we, it got introduced to the arcade, there's only one machine. So there's about five to ten of us first playing the game regularly. Uh, if somebody was good at it, they can play it all the way through and then uh, you'd have to wait like a good like six, seven minutes before the next guy could play. There might be like 12 people in line. I mean, if there's a line, you're gonna have to wait in line, so you put up a card, and most machines would have a card line. 10 cards, and they're all like falling off the machine. So now you're like thinking like, what am I gonna do <laughs> for an hour? Everybody was willing to wait that long for a game. I guess I could probably talk to these people that are also waiting an hour for this game. It was a conversation starter. You know, not a lot of people can say that with many games because they're so involved. This game was so open. It was inviting. You know, we, we brought more and more crazy things with us. Eric would bring his you know, Mahjong set and we'd all play Mahjong while we waited for our turn. We had another friend, Eric, who would bring his laptop and a DJ mixer and we'd sit there in the break room DJing, practicing DJing while we were waiting for our turns on Technica. It cultivates a scene that you won't generally get to experience in your house. Oh yeah. We would wake up, like get actually, there right when it yeah, yeah, get a McDonald's breakfast, go to Golfland right when they open. I mean, back when I was running to Technica, I lived literally five minutes from the arcade, so I was here like pretty much every night. Like I would just go to work, I'd get out, and I'd come here after school and. Anytime, any chance I got. And then that kind of excitement where you pull into the parking lot and you're like, Who's here? Who's car, here? <laughs> Who's car is here? Who's car is here? <laughs> car is here? Okay, you're here, you're here, awesome. And then you like walk into the arcade like, oh, I'm already excited. I set myself a goal, I want to clear all the songs. I was like, I'm going to the Son of a Son. Son of a Son. Son of Sun was the hardest song at the time. But when you hit like Son of Sun that first time though, oh my gosh, that was, you'll never forget that. <laughs>
remember Son of Sun HD was the bane of my existence. <laughs> I failed that song so much. So much. It was so difficult. I could never get past the bees part. It creeps up on you and just uh, all of a sudden it's just a bunch of really, really dense notes together. And that was just something that I was terrible at. まあ、その前の他の仕事でも一番難しいところをやらされることが多くて、ま、テンポはどんどん早くなっていくし、細かくなるし、なんででしょうね。ま、もうプレイラーもでるよ。何個いるけばあるかもしれないですよ。どうも
Then we met a bunch more Technica players. That's how I met the New Yorkers, actually. It was their first trip to the break, and I got to meet a whole slew of new people. I spent almost the entire weekend with them. Hanging out, dinner. Asking for advice, how to get better, what songs to choose. Some people here just became like my close friends, because I'd see them like all the time. They'd be coming here almost every day, too. This is a place that you can go for an evening, have some fun, eat some food, hang out with your friends. We don't want you to come spend $20 and go home. We want you to feel as if this is your second home. We would stay well past the arcade's closing time, and the guys at the at A on the Brick would actually let us play until we wanted to leave. So even when Platinum Crew came on, we just um, kept going because of the friends we had there. One day, one of my friends called me up and he said, Hey, there's this guy perfect playing songs. Like he was wrecking it. And I was like, Who is this guy? And they're saying like, oh, this guy named Sang Kim. I, I don't, don't know anything about the, the Korean scene at all other than that Sang Kim was the, the Korean god. Like I drove quickly to RK Infinity and he was there like, holy crap, I've seen pictures of this guy, I've seen footage of this guy play. He just flew in from Korea and he still had his bag, his luggage with him when, when he was playing and he freaking perfect plays like songs. He still has the number one score for Super Speed to this day. Like, it hasn't been beaten yet. It's ridiculous. Even though he was jet lag, I can't even imagine what it was like if he was playing serious. What was he like as a guy? Is just like, was he reserved? He was or? so normal. <laughs> like, you wouldn't have ever thought that this kid played music games as a hobby or as a profession. Like, he knew how to separate his life from from music games. 아무래도 아케이드 센터라는 공간 특성상 좀 굉장히 시끄럽잖아요 주변이. 어, 말이 잘안 들리고 막, 막, 어, 막 이렇게 <웃음> 가까이에서 소리를 질러야 되니까 아, 저희 지금 그 야식 어, 야참 먹으러 갈 건데 같이 가시겠냐고 이런저런 얘기를 하다 보니까 어, 자연스럽게 친해진 것 같아요. And it was awesome. Like he was probably the most down to earth person ever. We wanted to see more people play. I wanted to see the talents. I wanted to see the skill. So it was only natural to start some kind of a tournament specifically for Technica. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I ran several tournaments at the break. A friend was coming from the East Coast to a Technica tournament held at Sunnyvale Golfland. He said, you should come. They were having a tournament on the West Coast. They were telling me that I really should go to this tournament. I'm like, well, I can't go. It's too expensive and I don't know how I'd be able to make it. And then they started at some point pulling money for me to go to the tournament. So I took the bus there, but suddenly there's a, this massive community that I didn't really know existed. People from all over the city, all over the state, sometimes all over the country. I was just this random dude that was just playing games and then this other whole community was just like pulling money to try and get me over and I was like, this is incredible. So I, I made the choice to buy a ticket for the next day to fly over to NorCal to participate in that tournament. I gave up the opportunity to see Times Square New York just to go down uh, 8 on the break New Jersey. Everyone's playing in this tournament and laughing and having fun. I had I grew to love the game. From that tournament on, I put my heart and soul into it. It was really fun to just 
have those sorts of uh, competitive experiences with people. Tournaments make me super nervous. It's rare for me to actually come in like top places, and I don't even claim to be like even good at the game I have a wiki for. I don't think I ever got extremely good at the game. I have certain songs up my sleeves, but that was about it. Because tournaments are not about, not necessarily about finding the best player. I think you shouldn't enter if you don't think it's going to be at all fun, if you think, you know, it's, it's a waste of time. Um, but not because you think you won't win, because that's not always the point. The thing about Technica is that you have a lot of leeway to actually be silly as you play, simply because it's a touch screen. If I'm playing DDR, the buttons are just right there. There's four arrows that I'm always hitting and they stay there. But for Technica, you just have a screen and basically the developers for Technica can do whatever they want to make you interact with the screen. Gimmick tournaments are fun. And I'll say that because it takes away the hardcore elitist mentality of the game. Well, each round had a different theme. It could be something completely random, like playing with one hand only, or blindfolded, or whatever it is. To split the screen in half, one player would take the top half, and one would take the bottom half. You know, use gloves, you can use, like, other inanimate objects. Maybe, let's say, three or four weeks, we would, uh, we as a community would organize a low-scoring event, so... Um, the challenge in low-scoring is that you're supposed to get the lowest score you can, but at the same time, you're not allowed to fail. And then I did not know how to get a miss on purpose, and I would just panic. I was like... Duh, 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 duh. I remember this because <laughs> we made it to top four, and we both got knocked out in semifinals. Yeah, in that round, yeah. Yep, because we were... we were... Bad at being bad. <laughs> it's a game. You should play however you feel uh, brings you the most joy. <laughs> I think that's also when we started doing roulette. Roulette. The roulette. Roulette. I do remember roulette. One of the coolest things that came out of Technica was roulettes. You don't want to be like waiting let's say 30 minutes just to play your turn. So people just cleverly came up with, hey, let's all play together. It, there's a divider in the middle of the screen, and there's a blue bar that moves like this, and then wraps around and moves like this. There's a mod that you can turn on in the game that allows the wipe to go left to right on the top and left to right on the bottom. And you got on a line with people, like a, like a conga line. So one player tries to play one row of uh, notes and then when his row is done, they go to the back of the line, and the next person would go on the top wipe, and they'd play. The next player comes in, and then plays the next row. How many games out there in the arcade like actually let you? like share a game with another person. Fun like, hey guys, we're all doing a roulette, let's, you know, everyone get in line and um, everyone would put down their phones and whatever they were doing and, and jump in line. It's fun. Really you're just, as a team, you're fighting to stay alive because you're completely abusing the gameplay of this game. Because lots of, lots of times the charts were kind of not, um, not made for that. <laughs> and so you had like hold notes that continued on into the next screen. And so you always, like, this one person, like, has to press the hold note and then, like, get off while the other person comes on, but still hold it or else you'll drop it and lose life and everything like that. So you had these, like, people bumping into each other and it was just, um, it was crazy and fun. Yeah, I mean, if you failed, it was all a joke anyway. It was always supposed to be this sort of break from tryharding and a break from being competitive. I don't know who first came up with the idea. Uh, that's a good question. I'm actually not sure where it first started. Funny thing. I thought I came up with roulette until Airwell was like, oh man, you're ready? And then like, they joined me and I'm like, not my idea. It might have been something we saw on YouTube. I'm not sure if it's from Korea that it first originally started. I believe I saw a video on um, uh, the Korean Platinum Crew's um, user-created content board. I really, seriously, I heard roulette system when I came here in USA. <laughs> 그 쑥스러워서 그랬을 것 같은데 아무래도 그런 플레이를 하게 되면은 한국에서는 아무래도 이제 그런 식으로 상대방이 플레이할 때뭐 건든다거나 그러면은 굉장히 예의에 어긋나는 규칙이어서 그런 시스템을 본 적은 없어요. Where it is? Close to them.
솔직히 저희는 테크니카 1하고 펜타비전을 이제 나왔기 때문에 아2 때까지는 있었는데 저는 테크니카 2 팀에는 참여하지 않았었기 때문에 every arcade that had like some core players or that was somewhat famous uh, they all I think had the machine at one point uh, but I just couldn't get it into like the bowling alleys I don't know like Dave and Buster's and Chuck E. Cheese they just didn't want to work with us so um, yeah, I just told him that you were going to have to find a new team to take over. It got passed off to basically to Pentavision Global, which was a U.S. Uh, branch. Essentially, like, I got involved with them, so they brought me on to uh, handle marketing, community management, uh, sales, and uh, production work. Were you still involved? I was up until uh, just the very beginning of Technica, too. Technica 2 improved on Technica 1 in so many ways. The interface, the music selection, and what charts were available. The online shop, you could purchase new songs and new content. As opposed to Technica 1 where it was like, okay, here's your, here's your selection of songs and the one difficulty. I was super, super active in the community all through Technica 1. When Technica 2 came around, it was still about the same until Crew Race dropped. When they made the crew system, like, the whole game just drastically changed. It was a first in the game for me, at least, to see guild-type uh, features in a rhythm game. In Technica 1, a lot of group of friends would kind of collectively get together and create groups in particular that represented themselves, I guess. The developers of the game saw that and they wanted to incorporate that into the next installments. The way it worked is you formed a crew with several people, and when you played the game, your crew would earn points. And the idea was there are more points in the era crews. It was, it was a breath of fresh air at the start. Originally, the competitiveness between each crew was uh, fairly, you know, tame. These people were just like, hey, we're recruiting for this crew. You want to join us, you know? It was supposed to be like a team kind of thing. You guys share the same love for the game. You guys play together. It felt it was kind of an honor to be part of a skilled tech, uh, tech good crew. You know, you try to be top ranked. I always wanted this to be up there, top three crew, not only in skill, but in points. What determined what was a top crew was how many crew points they had. So after, a, after very shortly after Crew Race came out, it was very obvious that your skill in your crew didn't matter as much as how much you played. The idea was to play as much as possible rather than doing the best. So this made a lot of money for the arcades because people would just keep playing and playing and earning points for their crew. That got a lot. That got into a lot of people's heads. I, I was very competitive. I was in one of the best crews and I played every week. And I, I contributed a lot of points for the team. And I liked doing that and I liked being in a crew of other people who liked doing that. And like there would be different factions and they would play against each other. I, I was full of myself when I was in NR Elite, okay? I, wanted to be in the top five crews because when you go to djmaxcrew.com it shows the top five crews and i wanted to make sure that nr elite was always there if you wanted to make a a high level crew a, a crew that was ranked really highly the only way to do that is if you have players who play the game a lot technica 2 uh, would allow you to have up to 10 people in a group crew you know we were a bigger community than just 10 people we all wanted to be associated there would be certain players who didn't play the game hardly at all or maybe even once a week or not even that. And I was really pretentious about the whole thing. I was just like, you need to play this much each week because we need to stay in the top rankings and stuff. You would kick them out in favor of these other people who did play the game more so that we could get ranked higher. Like, the best crews were the ones that had the point requirements and they had the playing requirements because that was what was most important. Um, you wanted to stay at the top. And that created a, also unnecessary trauma, in my opinion. If that was too much and you got kicked out, or you, you had left for whatever reason, you wanted to join a more lax crew that didn't have those requirements, there were hundreds of crews. You could join whatever one you want. This is not a game meant to be solely competitive that it would shut people out. The whole point of the game was to get people to be involved in it. If you played lots of crew race, then you got a bunch of crew points and max points. That was the best way to farm max points to get unlocks. Yeah, that was really annoying. I think, I, I think Technica 2 was not as fun because of that. You know, it was hard to get all the songs you wanted because you had to be like, you know, the top tier crew to earn all those crew points to buy the songs, whatever. Um, and if you weren't in a really, really good crew, then it was harder to get points. And that's no fun. If you use the same exact machine to like play with other, um, other crew members, like, I mean, you are bound to get competitive. 
we would like mathematically break it down like, okay, if nobody shows up in <laughs> in two hours, we will make this many points per one. Person. Oh yeah, and you like just constantly check your phones. Like, are, are we still phone. we're still top ten? We're still top ten. <laughs> <laughs> And I remember spending a lot of time just playing the game and grinding the game and not really enjoying it, but trying to just keep our crew points up high enough so we can stay competitive in the rankings. So I'd start showing up at like weird times at Golfland because I was homeschooled. So I, I had the advantage of showing up on a Monday morning when everyone else would be at school and I'd play then instead of playing when more people would be there. That's where it started to die, you know? I cared so much about crew race that I stopped caring as much about my relationships with people in the community and just having fun playing the game. It became so competitive that it became unfun, and that's when I quit. I felt the community learned of their mistakes from Technica 2, and they did what they could to prevent all of that happening again in Technica 3. I had been with the company for, I want to say about six months by the time Technica 3 had come out. Okay. Technica 3 still uh, had the crew uh, implementation, but uh, there was a little, couple changes. There was some change to it, things like the unlock system were more streamlined. But the core gameplay and the core engine was the same. Again, the impression that I got from Technica 3 is that they there wasn't too much effort to innovate. They, they did. They redid the theme. They added a bunch of songs. So, you know, there were updates. There were new songs. So every like every two weeks, people would line up and just play and hang out. The negativity started to subside in Technica Three, and we wanted more people to become more involved in the game. Again, Technica Three, you had a bunch of people coming in. I think there were more people who got into it than the first two games. Yeah, I'd see a whole bunch of players that just started. Um, I got in. I got in. Around, like, T3. I was started off very new. I didn't, you know, know many people. Our, our kid was small. I started Technica a little bit late, so I didn't have long time experience. So I only got to play for around like three months ish. Like, like a lot of playing, but I wish I started like T1 and stuff. 좋으니까, 시작을 했어요. They, they released updates, what, like every, typically on Tuesday afternoon every two weeks. There was always a lot of content until there was none. Well, from what I understand, uh, the pre-planned updates for Technica 3 ended at um, the 24th update. The final content update, they added like, uh, they basically threw a whole bunch of content on us that once including like the hardest songs in the game. And once that happened, we kind of knew like something wasn't right because they should have staggered these updates over a few months and they didn't. After that, there were no more updates for quite some time and that's when I started losing interest in the game. So I think that's when my interest started waning in the game a little bit. There was nothing new to look forward to. We had everything already. And you just like didn't see the motivation anymore. Because when you played since Technical 1, you, there was a rhythm, right? Um, every year or so, there'd be another version. There was rumors going around of another installment of the game. Um, so that's what we all expected. Like, you know, after, like, what, September, October, we were expecting another version to come out. Um, that's probably another reason why people started quitting. People were like, you know, I'm gonna wait for Technical 4. You know, I'm just gonna wait, don't worry. I'm just tired, I'm done with the game for now, I've beaten everything, I'm just tired. But it just never came to fruition. Obviously, till now, Technica 4 doesn't exist. I was planning to return to Korea when it is vacation. I wrote on Facebook that this game is I want to be in Korea when I live in Korea. But after six hours, it just <laughs> announced that it's going to be die. After six hours? Yeah. I heard like rumors that it was going to be shut down one day. It didn't come out of nowhere. I think when it was announced, people were not really super surprised because uh, there are already like some signs. And it was made official by Penavision when they announced that the servers were shutting down. It was just one day where there was just this announcement that Platinum Crew was going to go down. None of us could really believe it at first. It was very sudden, I think, and it was just very shocking. We spent all this time playing this game. They literally can't do anything because you need the content and a card to play. 
because it felt like all our work was just in the end just not there anymore. And it dropped out, you know, it's the day they turned off the servers and stopped making money. I think it was around Christmas time, or at least a little past Christmas after that. And I remember the servers went down around my birthday. So I was like, thank you for this wonderful birthday present of taking away this fun game. I mean, I definitely was not expecting this to hit me as hard as it did. Well, there goes another game I really love. I just definitely have to say, um, it wasn't meant to end this way. When word got out that the technical service was ending, everybody came out from the woodwork. I coordinated with the arcade owner in one of the malls that we will be gathering here, and we wanted to just do one last farewell party for this game. Maybe we had a going away party or two. <laughs> yeah, we did some good roulette. In that meetup, I guess there were about 40 to 50 people. There was nothing that we could really do except to try and support the game as much as possible. And at that point, it's up to an arcade. Hey, this machine is no longer getting updates. It's less of an incentive for people to come back to the arcade to play these games. I looked at, you know, how much money it was earning before I sold the last machine and how it didn't make a lot of sense. An offline machine is a dead machine. We, it wasn't planned that we would get rid of Technica. It just kind of happened that way, unfortunately. It's definitely the company's fault. The community had no power of this whatsoever. Hands down, it's Penta Vision's fault. And it, everyone, it's not Penta's well, fault. Well, like, everyone was really um, liked Technica. And, in the like, end, they would have to be on what well, logic or fashion. Conflict between the middle was in uh, Penta Vision. Oh, yeah, that was the whole thing. Sometimes I think about it, but maybe it was like, there was, unless Technica was like, huge, 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 why do you think that Technica ended? A lack of faith on his part. The community. We were, we were spoiled. <laughs> uh, we wanted updates all the time. We demanded so much from the developers when they were such a small team and they couldn't keep up. Because people just love to stay in the new. It's just what our generation's all about. It's just like cell phones, you know, no one sticks with the same phone like for over a year or two. Everyone just gets a new phone, new phone, new phone. They love it because it's just the fact that it's new. Part of me feels like I only have myself to blame for not continuously playing. I mean, honestly, what started off as five people going to San Jose Golflands turned into just me and my roommate. And even then he started to jump ship. <laughs> the game was still the game itself. Like, there's, there's a lot to do. There's a lot of ideas that can take place. But people were just walking away from it, like, oh, you know, I never really liked this game or I, I never really felt connected to it. I was like, no, you met a lot of good people through it. And it's still just the same exact game that you always love, you know, that you always supposedly love. It was the negativity of the community. There was all this drama over, like, who's friends with who and what crew. Some of the players were discouraging other casual players. The arcade machine in itself was expensive to, to run um, and it could only acquire so much money throughout the day so it was imperative that we had an outreach and a huge community behind it. It's not a job, you're not getting paid for it, you're losing money for it, anything. These people just made it so difficult. That was really irritating in the community, I really hated that. I'm not the only one, I'm pretty sure. I remember part of me thinking Maybe I, I want to remove myself from the Technica community because I, I don't want to like have all this negativity. But then I, I remember and I realize that there is no way I can ever remove myself from Technica because it is so deeply ingrained in my life experiences and everything. I don't think that they had any role in Pentavision's decision to end the game. At Pentavision Global, when I was there, whenever we were putting a game together, we tried to do what we could to tailor the title for the North American fan base. It wasn't necessarily about tailoring to the North American market, it was about tailoring to the fan base specifically, because we knew that the returning players were the ones that we could really rely on to drive the profits and the earnings for the games. In the end, it's all about the developers. We still have some games out there that have very toxic community, but it still keeps going. So even though we have like the most behaved players, if the company decides to like pull the plug, then there's nothing we can do about it. I heard a lot of things about 
internal company turmoil. One thing I would have said that should have happened was that at the end of the game's online life was release a patch to unlock all of the content without needing a card. Like, no questions asked. And it just feels like after a certain point, they just didn't really put as much effort into their releases, I guess. 特にそのゲームまあ仕事する時って最初の発注されてその時にやり取りが発生するだけでそのサービスが終了する時に終わりますよとは言われないんで何ちゅう終わったのも後から知ったぐらいですかねもうちょっと盛り上がらないのかなっていう思いはありましたけどまあしょうがないですよね。테크니카에대한그저는이제원만하고나왔지만은되게그애착이있었어요애착이부분되게그좋아했었어요테크니카를느낌은되게슬펐죠사실은어떻게보면은그때정말열심히일했었고그때가이제거의20대마지막이었는데그때좀네슬펐어요 <웃음> You know, when they made Technica, like when we all talked about it, uh, we dreamt for it for be uh, ten years. So we knew that uh, we could put these things out there and try to support this thing for ten years. But uh, ultimately, uh, as much as we tried, uh, we were losing money sometimes on this game. So it. It, it would completely destroy us. It was the market trends and the inability of the company to uh, change its viewpoint on the way things should be handled in a worldwide market, and which is an ongoing issue. The same reason, reason we have with Konami right now. They, uh, they can see Japan, and they can see that market, and they know how to relate to that market, but they don't understand the United States market. I think there has to be some way to make products custom to the United States so that they're affordable. This has happened before. There are versions of Pump It Up that are only sold in Mexico. And they're a much cheaper version of the cabinet so that it's affordable for that market. And there are more Pump It Ups in Mexico and South America than there is anywhere in the world. There's a great market here and it could be revitalized, but they, they're uh, not able to do that apparently. The market just kept shrinking. The lack of arcades, the mobile stuff was like on fire, right? And so people kept saying, why isn't this thing on an iPad and stuff like that? And Tapsonic did really well. So it didn't make any sense for them to support us to try to do anything that wasn't really for mobile. What it was was just like the arcade side of the business didn't really have a strong like impact on earnings anymore. There was this horrible transition time um, a lot of the teammates left. We kind of started realizing that there wasn't another game coming out, but it wasn't something that was ever officially like stated, like we're not going to make another Technica game. We were kind of under the impression that they were just going to kind of let it ride out until it got to the point where it was necessary to make another version of the game, and it just never happened. Even though Penavision took down Platinum Crew, the player base still rallied to create programmed crew which is basically everything Platinum Crew was. And now there's a dummy server that's set up that replicates what the online functionality was before. Basically the whole goal of the project was to unlock the content that was locked when the real server went dark. In the end, if a company stops support of a game, I, I fully believe that if fans come in, in and make their own server and make it available, as long as they're not charging for it, I think that should be, you know, should be legal. There's this really badly written law called the Digital Millennium Copyright Act that uh, makes it illegal to break digital locks that are put on software or music or video or creative content. And it makes it illegal even if it's done for a purpose that's totally legal and beneficial. It's not expressly illegal, but it's kind of construed to be illegal right now just because um, of the way that the, the Digital Millennium Copyright Act is worded. And to the arcade operators, the games that they purchased for so much money, I, they have the right to have access to the full game that they bought. Someone making a server and causing all the machines to go back online and having that content accessible um, seems the most ethical to me. People can propose exemptions to this uh, anti-circumvention law, the DMCA 
and we've filed our initial petition we'll be filing asking the Librarian of Congress to declare that it's not illegal to, uh, for example, change the IP address in your copy of the game so that it points to a different server. It's a pretty tough process. It takes about a year. You have to you have to present evidence and testimony and then to get it renewed every three years because that's what you have to do. I don't know if there's anything else that could really kind of keep it going um, other than the new people coming in and playing the game and having them improve upon the game just like everyone else did back when it first came out. Oh man, I really enjoyed it. I'm pretty surprised that it didn't see more mainstream appeal, actually. I'm surprised Technica isn't more popular. The best parts were when I actually got into the beats and, you know, you're kind of jamming out and you're like, oh, I'm doing all these cool things with my hands. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was, that was really awesome. And I didn't know any of those songs, so it was sort of difficult. But I liked, what was the one that was an initialism? It was like a seven letter word that had, oh. someday, yeah, I really liked that. that. It was really interesting how I really felt that mm, the experience of playing the music really made the song come alive. Like I think it really did a good job giving like a, a physical manifestation of the music. Like not just like complimentary, but I really felt like I better understood the music when I played. Probably my favorite part at the end was actually the, what do we call it, when everyone's cycling through? And the roulette option, right? You get the social interaction part of it. I, I really like that it was more customizable of an experience than DDR. Like DDR, you have to have one person standing on the platform. Technica, you can have several people like standing around, hitting different parts of the screen or rotating around, and that's not possible in a lot of rhythm games. Like you can't pass the guitar back and forth in Guitar Hero. For me at least, one of the things that's really important is being able to just like make really good memories with people you really like. And I think Technica is certainly one way that I could do that. And if I did have like a group of people that I really enjoyed spending time with and this was like how we bonded, I would definitely do it a ton more. Those new players go through the same process that all of us did when we first discovered the game. Um, you know, that, that's something that I like. I see that process happen. I've, I've watched people recently pick up the game for the first time and then they come to me all excited that they passed their first six or seven. You know, new people can definitely walk up and, and play it. A uh, critical aspect of that is keeping the machines out there, keeping them on. At least the Technica machines that we had at Sunnyvale Golf Line were riddled with issues, uh, typically involving overheating, I would say, you know, I would go to the manager and say, hey, can I borrow the keys and give it a shot? And they would say, sure. So I would, so I would poke around in Technica and see if I could fix it and started learning how to fix that and fix other games at the arcade as well. So because of uh, all the work that I've done for Sunnyvale Golf Land, I was able to, uh, was able to convince him to sell me one of the cabinets. That's why I usually will open up my machines to friends of mine who want to come over and play it. That's why I bring my machines out to conventions where people can enjoy it. There will always be some type of niche events out there that showcases what arcades were. You could call Best of the West like sort of the, like, the Olympics of, of music games. It's 10 tournaments in one massive tournament. And we scheduled it for the summer of 2012 and we learned a lot of things. Second year went much better and we're doing the third year this weekend. The games themselves were Dance Dance Revolution, In the Groove, 2DX, Poppin, U Beat. We have taken out Beat Mania 3 and we replaced it with Sound Voltex. We added Re-Rave, Guitar Freaks, Drum Mania, and uh, Technica. Of course. So you can grab, you can grab down here. Uh, we, we can table it to make it easier to, to carry. We have to lift so that we get over the ledger. Uh, we're transporting a technical machine to the venue this year because two T3 machines are now gone, so we had to bring them back. The problem with this is, typically with ratchet straps, you want to apply a lot of tension onto it so it doesn't move. This, I don't want to apply a lot of tension on it, but I don't want it to move very much. I've made a couple trips out here before. I've made a couple times, so I know like... Just so we can get it out of the way. Okay, put it down. Use your knees. Okay, just like that. When I first came to America, I finished middle school over there. I had to, well, I was basically sent back two years and I had to start 
uh, ninth grade all over again. And that kind of isolated me from everybody else. High school, I barely have any friends. I'm one of those few who struggled in high school making friends or doing well in school. But in me seeking out to this um, arcade, like I would have my own small little group and all these great people that I've met. Technically the game, the people I've met through it, taught me how to socialize almost. About 40-50% of my Facebook friends were actually first from Technica. Before I played Technica, I never would have, one, thought I would be hanging out in an arcade, two, I never would have thought I'd move out, and three, I never thought I would get married before the age of, 20, of 30. <laughs> That's how I've met people. That's how I'm pretty sure like 90 to 100 percent of the arcade goers, that's how they met their friends, and they're long, good time friends. Yeah, like I used to live out east. I, I got into Tiger Jump when I moved down here. I went to California and I met him. Uh, we already built friendship, like not just for game, but for hang out for everything. But but really thankful for DJ Max because of that we meet together. I made so many friendships in this game. I mean, how could I not? Technica helped me get a job. These people saved me, pretty much. I don't know where I'd be without. The outside aspect, the people, the experiences, the memories. The only way it affected me is because I met her. If I can really say this as a regret, I wish I experienced more, I wish I met more people. It's like something, something I grew up with, sort of. So it, it always has a special place for me. You know, United States players and Philippines players and Singapore players, we all kept in touch because we all kind of, if, grew up together through through the game. You know, we would have never met each other if it wasn't for this game. We knew that this game was gonna stay in our hearts. Uh, making a game and seeing the people around the game, uh, it meant pretty much everything to me. It was actually one of the hardest times of my life, but uh, it was actually Probably the happiest time I've ever been. When I heard about Technica 3 and the crew race and the users, it actually makes me sad to think about that. But hopefully, you know, this kind of documentary will shed some light for them and, uh, you know, bring people back together. It should be a good competitive spirit. The reason why 1 and 2, like, I was really trying to go with those people and working with them was because it brought them together, actually. Um, my biggest fear is that a machine breaks uh, during the tournament. They forgot to tell us this, that they were actually moving the server from the, its current location to a different location. They didn't tell us that, so it was down for a while. Uh, once we got that back up, then I had to, uh, basically I had to run qualifiers for a while and started looking at the right machine. It was already set up to be online, but we were having troubles with the card reader. Uh, one of the other players was able to jam their card in there and it got stuck in there, but it works. We're just gonna leave his card in the machine then we'll get it out for him after Best of the West. Uh, and otherwise we're good to go for the tournament on Sunday. So they open at noon. We kind of expect that people are not going to be here the moment that they open. Even though, officially speaking, the tournament has started seven minutes ago. <laughs> uh, that's fine. We're just, we're just going to wait until I get people that's enough to actually start doing a match. Things will get rolling fairly soon. Uh, yeah, I've seen it before. I've seen people play, but like... This is my first time actually playing. It feels really fluid, but at the same time, it's not quite like pressing buttons. I like the touchscreen aspect of this. Uh, I would definitely play it more. It's familiar but different. I'm not 
other people over here. Just wait for me. I love group pictures. It's really nostalgic to me to be at the tournament. I show up knowing that I'm not the best player. The most important thing about Technica to me was just showing up, just hanging out with everyone that was there. We're just there having fun. And, you know, that's, that was the best part. It's the only part of me that won't seem to die. Clings to life. So just for today,
Jeff. Second place, Ben. First place, Arky. For Technica, third place, uh, Bo. Second place, Youngjin. First place, Black. Yeah. Arcades as they once were are definitely going away, um, but I think the, the culture surrounding arcades and the people who can appreciate what that culture was uh, are never going to let it die. <laughs>